Okay, so uh, here the money is taking us an exogenous variable, okay, which means that it is determined outside the model. And as we know, it's determined by the central bank, okay? And then uh, the velocity of money to is exogenous, so it is uh, fixed by institutional factors like the payment system and all those things, okay, how the credit system works. So those ones are considered fixed. Y is the real output that is determined by uh, supply factors, okay? We are talking about the supply side economics, okay? So Y is fixed, as we saw it. Y is fixed, okay? Y is fixed. So with this assumption, then we can make P the subject from the equation of exchange, okay? So from there, that is what this is what we have with V fixed and Y fixed. Okay, it it means that the ratio two should be fixed. Uh, take a pen and a paper. Eh? Write it. M V is equal to uh, P Y. Okay, so if V is constant, Y two is constant. Okay, V is constant. Y two is con constant. Then we can see that. There's a direct proportionality be between P and then M. Okay, I, I, I'm sure you have been taught this, mm, but we are just going through. Okay, so if V is fixed and Y2 is fixed, then P should be directly proportional to M. Uh, write it there. Uh, I don't even know why they didn't write it here so that we can know what exactly is happening. Uh, the thing is, MV is equal to PY. So making P the subject would divide through by Y. So dividing through by Y, we have P is equal to MV over Y, right? So if V is constant, Y2 is constant, then the ratio 2 is constant. So V over Y there will be constant. So it will be P is equal to M, then the V over Y will be somewhere, okay? So if that's the case, it means that there's a direct relationship between price and M. When the money supply, increases price will also what will also increase if price should decrease then if money supply should decrease then price should also decrease okay so based on the proportionality if money supply should increase by 10 percent then price should increase by the same 10 percent if money supply should increase by 40 percent then um, price should also increase by 40 percent so that is the proportionality component okay so in short p is solely determined by money supply it means that price is just affected by the quantity of money in the system this is what fisher was talking about okay you see something there's a statement in the cons that uh, inflation is anywhere and everywhere a monetary issue okay so we can only have an increase in price which is uh, inflation if it's continuous uh, whenever there's an increase in what in money supply so this is what the fisherian uh, quantity of uh, uh, quantity theory of money was just about that money is dependent on uh, that price is dependent on money supply that whenever there's an increase in money supply there's supposed to be a correspondent increase in price if there's a reduction in money supply then there's supposed to be a corresponding reduction in uh, price okay is that okay so now we know that it's only money supply that can cause um an increase in price or a decrease in price all right okay so uh, some people sat down and they said that this version is too mechanical it, it is too raw just pure mass so they introduced the cambridge approach okay and this one was uh, propounded by Alfred Masha and Cecil Pigou okay so for them they were trying to put this whole theory in the context of demand for money okay for demand for money so what they stated was the money de demand is a constant fraction of no nominal income okay where the nominal income is measured as price times the output okay so if you have your money demand okay money demand should be 
a constant fraction of what your no nominal income where the k is the constant of proportionality k should be within zero and then one okay so your money demand is solely determined by the nominal income nominal income is your average or general price level times the output level okay right Okay, so uh, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to move away from the equation of exchange and then look at what happens to money demand. And the K, the constant K is taken as one over one over the velocity of money. Okay, one over the velocity of money. I'm sure uh, you you know all these things already. Uh, here we are just talking about the we are just talking about the theory we we'll, we'll use it for mass okay this side is is mass but what we are do, doing here we just want to get the intuition of uh, the things that's why i'm rushing a bit so sorry okay and so if we take the k as one over v okay as one over v then it means that we are getting a md to be what one over v times the nominal um income uh, we'll come back to all the these things when we are doing the the mass okay okay uh, so we as we know there's a market called the money market equilibrium okay uh, called the money market and we have equilibrium in that market when money demand is the same as what as money supply okay so if there's an increase in money supply, what is going to happen is there's going to be excess money, okay? There's going to be an excess money. This is the situation term that's uh, more money chasing fewer goods, okay? Whenever there's a disequilibrium in the money market resulting from an increase in money su su supply, what this is going to happen is we are going to have excess money in the system, which means that when we have too much money, it will cause what? Excess spending, okay? There's going to be excess spending. So with a fixed a nominal output, what is going to happen? The price will go up, okay? We are using, write, write the equation of exchange, the one that we use the money demand, write it on paper. MD is equal to K times PY, okay? MD is equal to K times PY. MD is equal to K times what P Y. So what we are trying to say is, when you go to the money market, and then there is excess supply, uh, there is an increase in the supply of money. Okay, increase in the supply of money. Put that one down. So M S has increased. Okay, M S has increased. What is going to happen is that people are going to spend. There is going to be excess spending because there is too much money in the system. Okay. And as a result, holding Y constant, there's no change in Y. When there's too much money in the system, it doesn't mean there's going to be a corresponding increase in output, okay? So if Y2 is, is constant, but now people are spending because of an increase in uh, the money supply, what is going to happen in the product market? Now, the demand is too high, but supply is constant, and it's going to drive the price to go up. Okay, so you've realized that because of an increase in uh, money supply, there's an increase in what? In the price le level. So even from the Cambridge approach to what they saw was that money supply will still cause a change in price. So okay, whenever there's an increase in uh, money supply, it results in an increase in the general price level, okay, which means that uh, it is almost the same as the physician, just that uh, they wanted this to be in terms of money demand, okay? Right, so uh, per the quantity theory of money, what we need to know here is, uh, it's only money supply that causes inflation, okay? An increase in money supply will cause inflation. It won't cause a change in the nominal variables, okay? It's only price that, that that is going to change, okay? All right, any questions so far, please? If you have a question, you feel free to ask.
Any question? Any question? We are not moving on again, okay? We'll co continue with aggregate demand next week. So for what we did today, please, if you have a question, we'll 